Hi, I'm King Fajanakong. Fajanakong. I'm a born and bred native New Yorker, and I love to eat and cook, and I love New York. Everyone knows the Statue of Liberty in Times Square, but New York is such an incredible and diverse place. Today, we're going to take you to some areas that are not as widely known. Along the way, I'm going to try and share some things you might not know about the Bronx, urban gardening, and cooking. So let's cook, eat, and have some fun. And welcome to this episode of King in the Garden. Paul, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Thanks you too. For in today. Yes. What brings you in? Uh, you know, I'm doing a barbecue, and I want to get some some good meat. Can we start off with uh, some ground beef? Sure. Uh, it looks great. Paul's a good guy. Good guy to know. Yeah, let's do a pound of the pork, and then a pound of the garlic and herb turkey. From this section, I think we're good. Chef, thank really you. Appreciate you coming out today. Thanks. Always. See you next time. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Paul. Now, to get the condiments to jazz up our meat. Well, first of all, gotta pick up some Bronx hot sauce, and there it is, right on top. Can't do a cookout without the Worcestershire sauce. Get a mayo here, some ketchup, and some mustard. Dijon, Dijon, baby. There we go. I'm gonna get some nice onions. We're gonna slice them up, throw a little oil, just a little bit of salt and pepper whoosh, right on the grill. Can't live without garlic. It's good for you. Keeps the vampires away too. So these are serrano peppers. Actually, these pepper seeds right here are the seeds that grow this beautiful pepper. This is the key ingredient in the Bronx hot sauce. Let's see what's at the market, the green market. We are at the one and only Union Square Greed Market. At the barbecue, we want to have some grilled vegetables and we want to have some pickled vegetables. Springtime equals ramps. That's what we have here, beautiful ramps. I'll probably pickle these and instead of having like regular cucumber pickles, we'll have pickle ramps, throw them right on that burger. Little Bronx hot sauce. Yummy, yummy. yummy. that's right. Yummy. Hey, how you doing, Lauren? Good, how are you? Good, good. Tell me about the asparagus. Well, we've had it a few weeks now, and um, it's growing really fast. It grows like super fast, like every day we have to go out and cut the asparagus. Every day? Yeah. They look beautiful. Uh, I will definitely take a few bunches. Well, are you grilling them? I'm going to grill them, yeah. What it's do you like, suggest? I suggest like a little bit thicker, medium thick ones. Okay. I love asparagus. So simple. All I'm going to do is just throw a little olive oil on this, a little salt and pepper, go right on the grill. Davey, good seeing you again. Nice meeting you too, Chef King. This market offers so many great things for uh, if you're a shopper coming here. First of all, you get seasonal food, of course, nutrient dense. It's packed. It's picked usually the night before, generally incredibly fresh. There's asparagus here today. There's rhubarb here today. Fiddleheads and ramps are here today. This is a magical piece of New York City. The sales have been going really well with our, with the hot sauces. It's interesting. People have their preferences. Some like the green. Some like the red. And you get this nice little uh, seed packet that comes with oh, that's it. That's great. These are serrano pepper seeds, and now you could grow these on your windowsill. Or if you have a house, you grow them in your backyard. Got the asparagus, got the ramps in my bag, got the hot sauce in my bag, and you know where we're heading next? The Bronx. Today, we're going to Kelly Street. Kelly Street was named after Samuel Kelly. In 1804, this ad ran in the New York Gazette. Harry DiRienzo has been a community organizer in the Bronx at Banana Kelly since the 1980s. I mean, I know that you're working with the residents of Kelly Street on the garden, that beautiful garden that, was, that yeah. we've all worked together to build. By creating public space, we have the opportunity to build communities. People going, they're not just growing vegetables or peppers, whatever they're growing. They're actually talking to one another, sharing issues, sharing uh, concerns. So in the process, we're going to not only improve the quality of life by working together, but people are actually having some say over their quality of life and over their own futures. Something that when you experience this, it, like it's transformational. This garden brings us together and it brings us back to nature. Natural food and having it picked daily and eating it right after it's picked, I think it will help a lot of people with general health issues. I have some tomatoes from this garden and some of the, the other vegetables from here, and they're great. This 
skinny asparagus, fat asparagus. Sometimes it gets a little chewy on the outside. What I do is just use my peeler and just simply peel the outside of it. And then all you do is cut the end off. The main thing that you should know is how to cut an onion. You want to cut the top and bottom off first. So now it's nice and stable. Now we're going to cut it right in the middle. Next step, we want to take that out. And we're just going to slice along those lines and that's we're going to follow that pattern of the onion. Beautiful bell peppers. They look different but the same, right? So it's uh, they are different but the same. They're actually the same variety of pepper, but they were just harvested at different times. Green, of course, is the youngest one. And then as it gets older, it changes colors. It goes into yellow, goes into orange, and red is your most mature. This is the easiest way, I think, to cut it. In the seeds and the ribs, that's where the heat of all peppers are actually contained. If you want the flavor of the pepper, but you don't want the heat, you take that out. I'm just gonna take these uh, stems off. There's some thorns on there, so just be careful. Yeah, so I'm slicing this now, not because it looks pretty, it does look pretty. It provides more surface area. When you're grilling it, if they're really small, they're gonna fall right through the grate. Uh, there's more surface area to grill and season. I like the grill to do the work, so we're just gonna put a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, call it a day. You see ramps in the market, you know spring is here. We're gonna pickle the bottom half, and with the leaves, I'm gonna reserve that, and either we'll saute them later or throw them on the grill. I'm gonna make a really tasty, tasty condiment that's gonna go with a burger that'll add a lot more flavor to it. It involves our favorite stuff. looks like a mess now, but believe me, once this gets together, it's gonna be tasty. But the secret ingredients that's gonna make this sauce stand apart from the other ones, Bronx hot sauce, because you know what's in here, right? We have all our secret ingredients in there. Well, they're not really secret, it's right on the bottle, but it's ingredients that we all love. All right, and taste. Money, baby. Skirt steak. It's really flavorful. Skirt steak from the diaphragm. Back in the day, the butchers would actually, actually give this away for free. Nobody wanted this cut of beef. In the past like 10, 20 years, it's become the most asked for cut. I love just grilling it. We serve this at the restaurant and I'm gonna show you a marinade that we use. You know, just wanna cut them into manageable size pieces when we go on the grill. You see the lines on the steak? Uh, not important now, but it's going to be very important when we slice it. When we slice it, we do not want to slice it with the grain. We want to slice the meat across the grain. If you slice it with the grain, the meat will come out really chewy. And now, we're going to start the marinade. Something I like to use, this is a Worcestershire sauce. You know, say that three times because I can't. And it's great with beef, so we're going to put a little bit of that in. We're going to go with some soy sauce. What? Right. I love soy sauce. You love so I love soy sauce I too. Eat it. I love, I love to eat it too. I eat it at night when my when my parents go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> you eat it at night when? When my grand when my grandparents go to bed like Papa. <laughs> this is brown sugar. I wanna see. So we have brown sugar. That's gonna add our sweetness to it. And then we're gonna add some black pepper to it. Some Dijon mustard. Again, the mustard's gonna add a little heat and acidity to it. A little bit of olive oil to kind of bring that all together. This is a marinade, right? So you want the oil in there, and this way uh, it'll kind of bring those flavors together and let it soak into that steak. And when we grill it, it also will prevent the steak from sticking onto the grill. And the key ingredient to our marinade, the Bronx hot sauce. I'm not just saying it's because I made the sauce, but this is really good for marinades because there's six ingredients in this sauce. Serrano peppers, so you get a little heat from that. Apple cider vinegar, so you get a little acid from that. Uh, salt, sugar, a little sweetness. Onions, more sweetness, and garlic. It's the Bronx hot sauce, but it has all those components in there, right? And now we're gonna mix it in. Tell all my cooks, taste. Make sure it tastes good. That taste, amazing.
First of all, the cut of beef. Uh, you want to look for a good blend. What I'm talking about is the meat ratio versus the fat ratio. So a good blend is like 80-20, 80% lean, 20% fat, but you want that fat. You don't want anything less fat than 15% or else you're going to have a dry ass burger. Want to make sure they're around the same size, the same thickness. We don't want to have a fat burger, a skinny burger. Cooking times will be all off. Now we're going to make our patty. Start with a ball and massage it. Massage your burger. A burger is just good ground beef, salt and pepper. That's it. And you know what time it is? Grill time. Cooking is all about patience. We marinated everything already, we prepped it, and now we're gonna let the grill do the work. And just sit back, watch it, make sure it cooks properly, but don't poke it around. Don't mess with it. And the way the grill works, there's always, there's a hot part of the grill, like the hottest part, and then you have kind of warmer sections, different zones, you know? So whatever grill you're working on, you wanna know the zones. You wanna know where's my hottest zone, where's my cooler zone, Where's my warm zone? And that's how we're gonna kind of move our items around the grill to make sure they get cooked properly and evenly. This is the tough part now, because you smell that, that, that meat cooking and you're like ready to dive in, but we gotta give it a few minutes, let it cook. All our hungry friends will be very happy, I guarantee you. Our still beautiful hot grill, you hear that? That is the sound of magic. Woo wee! Look at that. Most important thing, once the steak comes off the grill, we want it to rest. Let the juices distribute evenly. You don't want to cut it too soon. We want to slice it against the grain. Here we go. Ooh, nice. You see that? Perfect, right? Nice, medium, rare. Now we are ready to assemble our burger. We're gonna use our lovely sauce. You have to taste before you send anything out. And let's take a bite. It's good, trust me. Is that money or what? <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. The community gardens are little treasures throughout this city and many urban areas all over the country. They produce many positive results for the gardeners and their communities. Highlighting and showing you some of their work they do and the history behind them has been a lot of fun for us. Hope you learned a little something and laughed a lot. And don't forget to pour on the Bronx hot sauce on your next barbecue. This is Chef King. Peace out.